Garage Town in 2012 brought some new challenges from the previous couple of years in that we had to basically redesign and reformat our allotted space. We moved to an entirely new house and had the added challenge of replacing some actors and creating new characters and scares. All of the actors are family and friends, adding a unique continuity and community. We decided to keep some of the local favorites that had accrued a small word of mouth following, such as the little girl from the ring crawling out of the TV, the Leatherface butcher shop, and the Freddy vs. Jason climax. Ready, Leatherface? I can't tell. Oh, what is this? Yeah. I just need one favor of you. What? When I, um, I come in with your eyes, you put me in the pocket. Man, I have you right after me. Yeah. In the front yard, which we generally keep atmospheric, but with minor jump scares, we had a coven of witches passing out candy and welcoming the trick-or-treaters. The older and or brave kids and adults stood in line for the Scarage Town walkthrough. We kept the design of the walk-up tunnel from previous incarnations of our home haunt, with trick-or-treaters being escorted through a dark tunnel. We like having someone to escort the trick-or-treaters through it all, sort of a Scarage Town host, and Bob did a nice job there. He had one scare in the tunnel, a vampire jumping up out of the darkness, which he activated via rug-covered foot pad. We cut some strips into the tarp, allowing actors to reach in or yell through to get added scares. This Halloween's not supposed to be so cool. Yeah. All right. Stop just breaking story. <laughs> Jason, what are we doing back here? We're setting up the haunt. But what are we doing specifically? We What's John doing? doing the tarp is going to be like a wall, and it's going to conceal us from. Christian aka the leprechaun and his little fort oh, yeah, and our secret little thing. Excuse us, you'll see. Yeah. Jess, tell us about that spot over there with the mud. Well, we dug out a huge pot for a mattress so that people will sink. So there's a mattress under the ground right now? Mm -hmm. Sweet. I love that. So, it took us like three days to dig it out though. Because of. The Frankenstorm. Right. <laughs> Frankenstorm 2012. It looks awesome on this side. From there, Bob led them through the tarp covered garage, which we sectioned off into two rooms. The first room is the chop shop with a bizarre kind of mini museum along one wall leading to Leatherface, who jumped out to scare the group. Here was another opportunity to get candy, sort of a reward for going through the haunt. Next, the groups were led through the dark ring room where Samara climbed out of the TV to the flashing strobes and screams of the gathered. When they turned to leave, a bizarre oversized faceless entity in a dress and top hat was generally pretty terrifying, leading them out of the garage and into the fourth part of the haunt outside. Don't worry, nothing's coming after you. <laughs> Who would want some candy if you dare? <laughs> now watch your head as you come through. This is a very low theory. You want to see what I have on TV? Wow, we have very brave souls. The backyard was also sectioned off into two parts. The groups were initially greeted by a hanging scarecrow who quickly came to life and jumped down from the pole to scare them. As the scarecrow stood watching, Freddy Krueger jumped out from seemingly nowhere and yelled, What a play! No further were the words out of his mouth that the huge crypt next to Freddy began to move with sounds coming from the door. Jason Voorhees popped out to face Freddy, but in a few moments decides it would be more fun to turn on the crowd. This was accomplished by planning some of our own kids in the group, with Fred and Jason choosing a lucky crowd member to toss into the coffin.
I don't worry too much about it. Just try not to hit it. You good, Zach? Yeah, I kept tripping up on it. Yeah. Just be careful with it. It's fine. But I got it on the floor and two of them are over the pit. Alright, let's rock. So how little? Like two. Alright. Why, why don't we kind of not destroy those little kids? You know? A couple of these kids are real little. All right, Fred. Yeah. I'm gonna scare the out of him. Fred. Right this way, right this way. Don't be scared. I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat. I worked up a big appetite. Are you hungry? No. I am. Right this way and put on their faces the light. The kitchen of Karen and Fred. That's some candy if you dare. You don't like candy? No. Okay. What about TV? Like oh, oh, careful, careful. Right this way, ladies. She always said she wanted to be on TV. Right this way. Welcome to the plains of Dora. Audrey thinks you're going to take her in the coffin. Take Mariah. Okay. Green face wish hat. You tell John. This one? He said he'd fight you guys. No, me, no! One? That one? No! Okay. Okay. The fifth section of Scourge Town is next. We buried a mattress under the ground and covered the entire backyard with hay so the footing had an odd, bouncy feel. When they unknowingly walked on the mattress, there was a graveyard to the left with a small fort in the middle. Groups who were distracted by the changing ground under their feet were extra surprised by the leprechaun jumping out and demanding that the crowd give him back his gold. At this point, with most running toward the exit, through the front yard haunted house and full circle to the witches, the actor wielding the chainsaw, Leonard Blaine, would punctuate the proceedings. <laughs> Setup was cold and rainy, and Halloween was too. But the trick-or-treaters braved the weather and kept a steady line waiting to walk through for over three hours, which is almost an hour over the allotted trick-or-treat time. There was much laughter in Scaragetown 2012. Even more screams and smiles all around. <laughs>